On this episode of Locked On Lightning, the Bolts continue to stay in the playoff mix. Nikita Kucherov continues to make his case for the MVP, as well as we explore some midseason what-ifs, all that coming up, and more on Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. On today's episode, we're breaking down the midseason what ifs, some of those fun scenarios. What if this? What if that? As well as we're taking a look at the Bolts continuing to stay in the playoff mix, as well as wrapping things up with making a case for Nikita Kucherov to be the MVP. All that coming up soon. But first, I just want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So we're going to break. We're going to start off real quick with the the lightning continuing to stay in the playoff mix, because I think even though they did lose their previous matchup to the Detroit Red Wings, which is, yes, yeah, a problem within itself, because like I've stated on the last couple of episodes, really the lightning need to win. I mean, I mean, really let's face it. Like every game at this point is a must win, especially when you're playing against your own division. And, the Lightning have had some struggles in the last couple of years. We can't even say this year, but the last couple of years with the Detroit Red Wings. And the Lightning will obviously see them again. And, and I feel like the Bolts need to pull off a couple of wins in a row against the Red Wings and and really in, con, in convincing fashion because I feel like we're getting to a point now with the Red Wings, the the other teams in the division as well as the Boston Bruins, uh, the Buffalo Sabres, who they played this past weekend as well. Uh, You kind of need to exercise any demons that you may or may not have towards these teams because it seems as though the Lightning really, like when they lose games uh, that, you know, really are games that you should win. I mean, let's face it. Yeah, the Red Wings have gotten significantly better over the past couple of years. The Sabres are a better team compared to two years ago. Uh, The Toronto Maple Leafs are kind of like in this weird limbo. We'll get to them in just a bit. But uh, the Florida Panthers have gotten back into the thick of contending for uh, the top spot in the division. And the Boston Bruins are continuing to do Boston Bruin things, um, as well as, you know, the Ottawa Senators, who are another team that tend to give the Lightning fits. The Lightning have done a good job as we stick a pin in that whole division thing (laughs) because a lot to unpack there so i'll try to unpack it within the next 15 minutes so the lightning have done a very good job as we all know um starting off slow to begin the season rattling off five wins over the last couple of weeks very impressive all around Uh, Very good performances against the Kings. Very good performance against the Devils. A very, very good performance against the Minnesota Wild, who, yes, are not a playoff team, but still a tough tough team nonetheless. Uh, And then winning a close one up in Buffalo. And then, unfortunately, losing uh, up in Detroit. And then have a tough matchup tomorrow night against the Philadelphia Flyers. I think that this team, regardless of where they are in the division, I think it's one of those games where, I mean, one of those stretches and really one of those months where it's really going to be a matter of of attrition for this Lightning team. And, and it's really going to measure, because I firmly believe, you know, some people might not agree with this statement, but really what it comes down to is that over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months, depending on how well or or how much you want to read into every single month of hockey or every single game of hockey, as you know or have been a listener of this show for 
for quite some time. You know we like to really dig into every single win and every single stretch of games. Uh, it's really going to come down to the Lightning being able to show that they want it more than any other team because when you look at the standings, everything is tight right now. I mean, it, the, the Lightning, uh, when, when you look at the the – the standings from Toronto all the way down to Tampa. I mean, everyone is Tampa and Detroit are tied up at points right now. Toronto, I feel like it's just, they're basically just kind of waiting for someone to come get their spot. I feel like it's just, you know, I, I spoke about in the beginning of the year, I think, or at least hinted at it that Toronto is a team that is, and I even said it on Twitter the other night, Toronto is a team that is massively overrated, in my opinion, because when you look at what they have on their team and and just, you know, the, the overall issue that has plagued them over the last couple of years has been goaltending. I mean, this is a team, when you look at their roster, at least their first 30 lines, they are a team that really should be contending for a cup, should be playing in the Eastern Conference, finals every year and that's not something that happens and and especially now this was a team that i felt like from the outside looking in they were a team especially now that they got past that first round win over the lightning last year you kind of felt like they were going to take another step like that that was going to put a another jolt uh in their tank but that's not something that happened and and really the lightning like I said, this is going to be a playoff spot because I, I feel like Detroit can do it, but I also feel like they can't just because they have the talent, but they don't have, in my opinion, the the experience. I feel like they're, right now, they're I think that they're, they're what Florida was two years ago. And the thing that really has now worried me that has come to my attention, especially now with the Lightning still in the wild card chase, yes, we could wake up in four days and the Lightning will be in that third spot in the Atlantic Division. Having said that, now that the Islanders have made a coaching change and they made a coaching change to NHL legendary goaltender, probably one of the top three best goalies of all time, and one of the most intense goal, uh, coaches of all time in Patrick Waugh. And Patrick Waugh is the kind of coach that is absolutely perfect for the Islanders. They're a team that is on the fence of making the playoffs, and he's the kind of coach that could propel them into that playoff spot. And that is something that worries me because he is going to bring this level of intensity that really not many coaches you see display openly. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because the Lightning are... Excuse me. Excuse me. The Lightning are a team that at times don't display the proper level of intensity. Yet, having said that, I still do firmly believe, and we're back. Sorry, I just had to pause there again because I had to sneeze. But the Lightning are a team that do not display the proper level of intensity for a team that needs to win every single game. And that's really something that has bothered me over the last couple of years with this team. But, you know, it's one of those things where they're going to have to take their level of play up to another level. I know that was a little redundant there, but they have to continue to bring a certain level of intensity that we have not seen them really bring in quite some time up until this current, this, this previous five game winning streak, which was very good, very uh, positive for this team. You know, it, the, the thing that really was disappointing was that it ended, but Really, my point is to, to round things up is that there are a lot of moving parts in this playoff race. And yes, it is a playoff race. I don't care if it's January. Uh, 
April is going to be here before we know it. And that's when teams really start to panic that are kind of where the lightning are right now. Uh, once we get into April, you don't want to be a team that is separated by a point or so between other teams that are trying to make the playoffs. Um, and what I'm saying is that the lightning in order for them to want to be playing in May, they got to start playing like a playoff team. Now, uh, like I said, very positive results from this previous five game winning streak. Uh, and, and, you know, now it's time to restart a new winning streak. You know, they got, they got Philly coming up next. Uh, they have the coyotes who, like we talked numerous times on previous podcasts that there are teams that you need to win and they're also against. And then there's also teams that really at the end of the day, there's no excuse to lose to them and coyotes are one of them. And then you have the devils at home to round out the month of January, a team that you have previously beaten, a team that I firmly believe can be beaten again. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this recent level of play from the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think it's very good to see. I think it's very positive. I think that, you know, now that we saw them sustain a winning streak for more than two, three games, uh, that's something that this team could hang their hat on and they could build upon as the season progresses on. So coming up in just a little bit, we'll talk about some mid-season what-ifs. You know, for example, what if Andre Vasilevsky started the season healthy and was able to play from opening night? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about mid-season what-ifs. What if they trade Stamkos, actually, even though it has been announced that he will be staying in Tampa Bay for the rest of the season. So we'll be talking about that just in a little bit. But first, let's talk about some one of our friends, and that is our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home. The, the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts. For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. So as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube, so subscribe to the channel. I saw that there are some people who are new to the channel. Uh, who had Buccaneer logos on their profiles, started to see the Buccaneers fall in the playoffs. I mean, I was, even though some of you who have been listening to the show for a while, who have gotten to know me pretty well, I'm a huge Giants fan. Uh, but of course, you know, I am, was, fo I was rooting for the Buccaneers to make a deep playoff run, but that, I guess this year wasn't the case. So, but to all of you that followed the show, uh, and are new to the show, welcome. And all to you who have been the everydayers, the ones, the day oneers uh, who have been with us for quite some time. Thank you for joining us as well. So we're moving on from talking about, you know, just kind of a little bit of an update that we'll have every couple of episodes or so, you know, how the Lightning are doing in the playoff race, because this is a playoff race and this is going to be a very exhausting playoff race for this Tampa Bay Lightning team. So you know, what better time to kind of not only leapfrog certain teams, but to also build your your lead on those teams. Because like I said, you don't want to be a team going into in April that is going to have, you know, the 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 scenario where a playoff spot is a matter of winning by a point or, you know, it's it's you know, the lightning need to win a game. You know, you don't want to have that. You don't want to have that in the last handful of games. You, you need to just pat a lead. You need to just cement yourself in the playoff conversation. Uh, but 
really that was something that I could have wished that the Lightning could have done from day one. And, you know, you can't help but ask yourself now at this point, especially now that Andre Vasilevsky's back uh, and, and all the different storylines surrounding this team. Victor Hedman looks like he's starting to get back or has been starting to get back into what we know him to be. Um, as well as, you know, Steven Stamkos, now it, it is well-known, common knowledge among Lightning fans, as well as obviously everybody in the organization that follows his team. He is with us for the rest of the season. But you can't help but wonder, what if? And that's what we'll be doing in this segment. We'll be talking about some what ifs. Really, the main one is where the Tampa Bay Lightning really would have been if they got off to a better start. And I guess this what if kind of encompasses a lot of storylines because you could throw the Vasilevsky one in there. Um, I firmly believe if Stamkos was traded, that would if. If he was traded before the season, which probably would have been a more likely scenario because once the contract negotiations broke down, Stamkos could have easily said, you know what, get me the hell out of here. I want to go somewhere where I'm going to get my money and I'm going to be able to play hockey um, by an organization that will pay me the right amount of money, uh, as well as that all coupled in with the fact that the Lightning played well to start the season. Well, they did. They played 500 hockey, but you know, not up to the level to where I would have liked this team to have played. So we're talking about that. And Really, starting with the whole Vasilevsky thing, I guess, like if he started the season healthy, you know, where, how would he have performed? And I think it would have been somewhat similar to what we saw when he did come back in the, during the week of Thanksgiving. I, I, I think that we could agree and also you know i'm i'm very much in the camp and this might be somewhat of a conspiracy but i firmly believe his play last year is directly linked to this injury the organization and him didn't want to admit it uh whether it was something that he kept from them or something that they also colluded together with just, just to see you know maybe how it was going forward and then eventually they mutually decided that we need to get this surgically repaired and we're going to say you heard it during the sea, uh, during the summer working out, but whatever. I mean, that's a whole nother off season podcast episode that we could talk about, but really the fact of the matter is, is that I think he would have played, you know, a hundred percent back to healthy, fully rested Vasilevsky. I firmly believe he would have played basically very similar to what we see what we have seen him play thus far, I think that really when you look at what he has done and really, you know, how he has played this season, I think that really, you know, to a certain extent, this is kind of what he's kind of averaged to be. Um, you look at his stats right now through 23 games. He's 13 and 10. His goals against average is 2.83. His save percentage is 901, which I I don't know how to really look at save percentage and and really come back from looking at that number and say to myself, this guy is a good to goaltender. I think really, you know, every goaltender see uh faces a certain amount of shots on any given night and it's not just a set number for every goaltender um i i am more inclined to look at the goals against average just because you kind of get to see you know where they're at and i think two 2.83 i think is a good kind of i guess it's just a good number to be at i mean, I mean admittedly so i would prefer him to be kind of in the camp of where he was back in the couple of years where we, when he won the Smythe, um, he was 2.21, uh, the year after in 21, 22, he was 2.49. That's more ideal. Uh, 
the only thing that I wish I could see differently out of him and I think would have, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to even throw it out there because it's such a thing nowadays with just the way the offense is. I mean, shutouts, how can you really, you know, it's not a given thing anymore. I feel like, you know, even though we are seeing it with certain goaltenders, I feel like, you know, the offense across the league has gotten so much better. We can't even look at that as, you know, oh, man, he needs to have more than one shutout, which he has this year. I can't really look at that and and, and say that just because of, you know, yeah, he's supposed to be one of the best on the planet, yet he's playing against some of the best offensive players that we have seen in quite some time. Um, so we we really can't look at that and, and give him a fair assessment while saying that. Um, and then when you look around with, with the other team, what, what's happened with the team, uh, as a whole, defensively, I mean, you know, you can't take for granted that early on, if the defense isn't playing well, is Vasilevsky going to have success? You know, you can't really say for sure one or the other. But if I had to throw my hat in in one side or the other, if yes or no, I would say no. I would say no. I don't believe that Vasilevsky would be playing well because, as we all know, if the defense failed him, um, especially with him, we know he's a very slow starter. So we we know that most likely he would have gotten off to a slow start. And and I know this might be a little controversial. I'm not saying that he would have played equally as maybe unimpressive um, in terms of the numbers. But, you know, Jonas Johansson, what he did to start the season was very impressive. And I think a lot of that impressiveness that we had for his numbers and his performance had to do with the fact that the expectations were just really so much lower than what we would have had for for Vasilevsky. Now, would Vazzy would have had anything remotely close to that? It's possible. It's possible. You you can't sit here and and if you're being completely unbiased, say that Andre Vasilevsky could have might not could have had a similar start to the season the first couple of months of the season that was similar to what Jonas Johansson did indeed have. Um, especially like I said, when the defense plays as bad as it did over the first two months, it, it's really something that, you know, we kind of have to look at ourselves and and with with some truth and and look at these scenarios and say, listen, it's almost a miracle that this team was where they were when Andre Vasilevsky came back from injury. And on the other side of that that branch, I guess, of that tree that is the the big lightning what if is the Steven Stamkos scenario, you know, would if what happens to that as well because the Lightning don't get the the proper scoring and that the market being is what it is or was really coming into the NHL season this year. What if the, what if Stamkos turns around after he doesn't get his contract and says, "Listen, just get me out of here." You guys piss me off. I don't want to be here anymore. Send me somewhere where I could get my money, where it's, I guess, the weather's equally nice. I don't know if Stammer really cares about that. I think he cared more about in this scenario about, you know, being shown respect. And, you know, I mean, you saw it in the, in, in the, one of the press conferences when they were talking to him about it. He was not happy about it. And rightfully so. I mean, listen, the guy has had a phenomenal career. Uh, under normal circumstances with the salary cap and everything, you know, in a world in what if in a world without COVID really, um, he probably would have gotten the money that he was asking for. Uh, if the lightning still in that reality did w- end up winning the cup in 1920. What if he does say trade me? My thing is going off trades Months prior, what we saw in the scenario in which uh, Tanner Janot was traded for with a w- was traded to the Lightning in return for a billion draft picks and and a couple of players, you know, can you really look at that possible what if and say Julian Brees Boss doesn't get fleeced? I mean, I'm not saying he got okay, yeah, he did. He got fleeced in the Janot trade. You know, I think Janot is a good player. I think he is for what he is. He's very good. 
uh, but he's not worth at all what the Lightning gave up in return for him. Um, can you look at the scenario, the what if scenario, if if Stamkos does indeed say, "Get me out of here." Do you think he has that same kind of mentality? Does he say, okay, I just need to get this done. I don't care what it's going to take. I just got to get this guy out of here so it's not a talking point all season, especially going into the season. I can't tell tell you with absolute faith that he doesn't get absolute, absolutely screwed and set the lightning back more uh, and give him up for absolutely nothing. So that's a that's a whole other scenario. I mean, it that's a whole nother podcast and episode within itself, because then now we're talking about who needed what at that time, um, you know, how does salary cap work with other teams? Do the lightning have to retain any type of money? Most likely. Yes. Uh, but really at the end of the day, I mean, these are fun scenarios to look back on. I think that, yes, you know, if I had to really pinpoint a more concrete one down it would be the one with you know Vasilevsky in the defense you know are they able to help each other to begin the season and my answer is flat out now I think the Lightning you know maybe they win one or two more games than they originally did heading into Thanksgiving uh, or around that time but I don't believe they are significantly better than they were when Vasilevsky was out so let me know in the comments below what you think about that and coming up in just a little bit we'll continue to make the case for Nikita Kucherov being this year's MVP winner uh, in just a bit. But first, let me talk about our last sponsor of the show, and that is our friends over at FanDuel. Now, listen, in case you haven't heard, the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a 5 dollar bet that's 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose the app is so easy to use and there are so many different ways to bet like live same game parlays you could find bets in the new explore tab and make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup fanduel the official partner of the nfl so as always, I want to thank everybody to make making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel there. Uh, and as always, one last final thanks to those of you who are joining us for the first time and you, the everydayer who has been there from day one, especially our day ones. Um, we're, we're continuing to make the conversation for Nikita Kucherov uh, being the MV- MVP this year, because really, I mean, he is one of those guys, and and I know it does. It never works out this way in the NHL, and I think it's so dumb the way it, it's almost a free for all with a lot of these rewards. It's not just the Hart Trophy; it's it's the Norris with the with the Norris is slowly turning into, and and you know Vezina Trophy. I I just feel like it's it's really become something that has just been very weird. Um, just, I mean, all, like I said, all the, the awards where, you know, you're not just base, you're not basing it off a single stat. It's not like the Jennings or, you know, the president's trophy where the flat out winner is, is determined by X amount of, of points or X amount of not goals given up as a group. Uh, these are all really kind of pop, popular you know popularity contest as as well as kind of you know you're getting a lot of canadian writers and i and i don't i don't want to go down that road but we all know you know especially with the mcdavid conversation he's getting if he he's getting every canadian vote except for maybe uh any of the writers from from calgary but what i am gonna say flat out first of all with this MVP trophy, you know, voting is that people need to stop looking at these, these players as just, you know, goals, uh, goal scored points. They have to start looking at it as for what the award really is at the end of the day and that's most valuable player and it's not best player in the league it's most valuable player 
So you look at the top three guys really in points. Um, you look at McKinnon, Coach, Pasternak, and then you could also look at goals, Matthews, Reinhardt, Pasternak, and Cooch. So you ask yourself, you know, there's a couple of different names there. Some of them overlap. Who, in your opinion, is top three? Because then we could eliminate the others and go into it. When I And this is my most unbiased. It's Cooch. I will say McKinnon. And I will put Pasternak into it because I think he doesn't get as much love, I think, as maybe he should because, you know, you look at those Bruins, this Bruins team, just how good they are. Uh, but he's really the best player when it comes to just scoring on that team and and really you know without him you know where would this Bruins team be and that's really where you got to kind of look at it uh and with Nikita Kucherov you know if he's not in this lineup as we have dealt with in years past where is this lightning team same with Nathan McKinnon if he's not in this lineup where's Colorado and so we'll ask the we'll answer the first question. Boston, I still think, is in the top three in the division. Uh, if not, they're at, they at least have a playoff spot, and they're they definitely have a little bit more of a cushion than I think the Lightning would have right now. You look at Colorado, and I'm saving Cooch for last. Look at Colorado. They're a team that I, I I feel like when I look at their division, when I look at the Western Conference, the McKinnon conversation for MVP is a lot stronger, in my opinion, for Pasternak. It's definitely a lot stronger, in my opinion, uh, than then for those that are going to say, well, you left out Connor McDavid because Connor McDavid is the conversation or the argument against him would be, be that, well, he's only keeping his team close to a playoff spot. He's not, you know, he's he, or in a playoff spot. He's not really doing anything to separate, help his team be separated. Um, from the other teams in the Western Conference, in the Pacific. And whereas I, I kind of look at McKinnon, he's such a huge part of this team. Yes, they have Cal McCarr. You know, that's really one of the arguments there as well. But, you know, Cal McCarr isn't going to go out there and score a billion, a billion goals, where Nathan McKinnon could very well do that. Now, you look at Nikita Kucherov, my argument, and I think a lot of Lightning fans could, could attest to this as well, without Nikita Kucherov, you take him out of the equation entirely. Let's say, God forbid, he's got season-ending injury, didn't play one single game, suffered it over the summer, or whatever the case. You take him out of the equation. And then you couple that with the Vasilevsky absence for the first couple of months. This Lightning team is could very well be at the bottom of the barrel of the Atlantic Division. They could be below Montreal if they're close to Ottawa. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think they're that bad. But I. I think that. They're pretty darn close. I think that they're right now at this point in time with Vasilevsky coming back in November. I, I firmly believe that they're probably around the 44 mark. So they're probably fighting for sixth place with Buffalo. 
Um, then again, who knows? Maybe Buffalo wins their matchups against the Lightning, but this team completely changes without Cooch. And that's where I think that we got lost in the MVP voting and, and how we evaluate how good players are in hockey. Because, yes, I get it. There's so many different variables and aspects that go into evaluating a player, um, especially, you know, they, they all play different positions, so that's also different. You know, it's not as clear-cut as football where it's mostly a, a quarterback or baseball it's usually a guy who hits home runs and average and rbi um is and then the nba you know they kind of kind of it's kind of the same thing as hockey and well but a little bit different in terms of evaluation but really what i'm getting to is that <clears throat> it's like uh, uh, you know what i'll use the nba analogy if you're comparing Jokic to uh, to Giannis, I think you take away Giannis, you still have a good enough team with Damian to Lillard to to make the playoffs. You take out Jokic, it's really a whole different ball game, and that's what it is with the Tampa Bay Lightning when Nikita Kucherov. You take out Kuch, you really don't. You, you're not in a playoff spot right now. We're we're sitting here on January 22nd talking about uh, you know starting a rebuild. You know, we're not talking about the Lightning fighting for a playoff spot. And I think that's what is lost on a lot of hockey fans when they are having the conversation and and will be having the conversation over the next couple of months. I think really what it comes down to it is that really not a lot is talked about in that realm when it comes to <clears throat> making the case for Nikita Kucherov. And that's why I firmly believe he should, as long as he continues to play uh, at the level he's been playing. Uh, should be the MVP by the end of the season, as long as the Lightning do make the playoffs. I think that is really the big, uh, the big, the big variable there. Uh, you know, if the Lightning make the playoffs, and Kuch is continuing to play well, he's in the top of of a lot of the the stat leaderboards. Then yes, give him the Hart Trophy. If he's if the Lightning miss the playoffs or he's not playing well, you know what? Give it to Nathan McKinnon. Give it to Connor McDavid for all I care at that point. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what you think about that. I mean, you know, it, it's there's a lot of things that need to happen in order for Kucherov to be the MVP at the end of the year. Uh, a lot of it has to do with him and his team. So tomorrow we'll be talking about some of the games coming up as well as the one tomorrow night against the Philadelphia Flyers. So that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Denker. I'll talk to you in the next one.